um, to interact. The reason why I went into radio, first of all, I actually started my radio career in 2005. I was in my second year in university then. And everybody was surprised, especially my siblings, my older siblings, you know, one of them actually, you know, fought me on it and said, no, you need to focus on your studies. My first degree was in mathematics and computer science. So imagine, you know, veering off into doing radio while studying mathematics and computer science it just seems counterintuitive, like why? You know, it seemed, it seemed like a distraction, but it was because of the passion for communication. I'm naturally a shy person although I'm not as shy as I used to be. So radio was an escape for me because even as I was shy, I still loved human interaction. I loved engagement. I still love engaging with people. And I find feedback interesting. I find it powerful. Radio has a powerful tool to connect with people that can't see you. And it's so powerful because they, they can't see you. So they depend on your interpretation of things, your vocal description of events, experiences, moments, and people depend on you to be able to translate that in the most um, graphic form or in the most um, relatable form. So the world sees occurrences and events through your voice and through your eye. I hear a lot of people when they go on radio say, oh, until I see you again next time. On radio, you need to be quite intentional. And you notice my pause before I use that word, because I find that most of the time, and I'm going to just, I'm not going to go, you know, peek on particular areas. I'll just cover it because I have little time. I'm here in Abuja for work. Um, so I'll, I'll be running off soon, but I'm going to cover as much as I can. You have to be intentional. I hear people when they go on radio, especially radio presenters, use certain words or certain you know, innuendos or you know sounds like uh, uh, because they're trying to collect their thoughts. It's okay for you to pause and collect your thoughts before you continue a conversation, but don't let it be too long. It's okay to be scared before you go on air. Because you, 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 once you put your, yourself in that position, you're whole, you know how powerful it is. You know the amount of people, the number of people that you're connecting with, people that are listening to you, people that may never, ever call or send a message in your entire career on radio, but have always listened to you. You will experience moments where people walk up to you and say, oh, I heard your voice on radio. Please do not let it get to your head. That is the one thing that I am forever grateful for because I feel like first personally I feel like it's the grace of God that helped me stay grounded and humble while I was on radio I always told my friends or people that I, I encountered after you know during and after my experience that that's the one thing that I know that I never understood the whole concept of being a celebrity <laughs> you know because usually when it gets into your head you miss the plot and you forget what's important. So you ask what's important on radio? Communication. To communicate, people need to understand you. To communicate, one of the primary skills to learn and hone is to listen. You need to be a good listener to be able to communicate. And you might say, oh, but I'm the one that's talking on radio now. Why should I, who will I listen to except when the caller calls? That's a valid point. But if you're able to hone your skills as a good listener, you'll be able to communicate from a place of understanding. And to communicate from a place of understanding, you need to be a vast reader. So a bit of a background. When I was younger, I had the habit of reading any and every material I come across. Fortunately for me, I had a library or rather a shelf, a bookshelf in my room. So I was just always reading. I, was a, I still am a voracious reader when I, I have the chance. 
So when you see any material, you see newspaper clippings, I used to read all those. I used to, you know, try to practice reading announcements and voicing jingles and stuff. I'm, I'm a voice of artist as well. So I've done jobs for Google, for Red Bull, for the brands, Nini, Tinykin and all the likes and GT and stuff. The current GT Cool Food and Drinks Festival uh, jingle um, that's running right now, I voiced it with Kubam Sasuko. You can do that. You can get to that point, but it needs practice. You need to always seek to improve on your skills. The basic skills of a radio presenter, which is why I'm quite happy that Sammy invited me to have this conversation with you, and which is why, as a conversation, I expect you to wave and just indicate that you're here um, because engagement is key, even on radio. So the basic skills you should have is beyond just listening and being a good communicator by listening and communicating clearly and communicating from a place of understanding, having read and studied, you know, the materials that you go on radio with. You need to also learn how to accept the fact that you can make mistakes, accept the fact that you're human, accept the fact that you don't know everything but you're expected to know a little about everything and not everything about something, which means we it's a continuous process, it's a, a continuous learning process. It's a journey, it's not a destination. Most people, when they're on radio and you know they relax and they feel comfortable and they feel like they've arrived, usually make mistakes from there on. But when you're on radio, you should open your mind up to many possibilities. I'll take it from the aspect of having an uh, interacting in an interview. So if you're going to host someone to an interview, a guest, for instance, that could be selling X, Y, Z, learn more, as much about the person as you can. Read your script. If you don't have a script, seek out a script, ask for it. If there's nobody to provide one for you, prepare one. A script is very simple. It contains the information that you're, you're, you're about to pass on to the public. It contains the basic information about your guest. It should contain the guest's name, who they represent, and the message they're trying to pass across, including the call to action. So if it's a sales interview, it should have the call to action, their phone numbers, email addresses, social media handles. It's your duty as a radio presenter to give the listener all the information they need at that particular time. So when you think about communication, it's not about speaking for now. It's not about sounding really good, like American or British. They sound good and great because we have this mindset that that is a higher level of speech. But let me tell you what's a higher level of speech is when I can talk and you can hear me and you understand every word that I say and you understand the message I am trying to communicate. You have excelled, you have perfected it. I tell people, if you want to actually want to speak well, you want to sound, you know, you want to speak for now, for instance, it's about pronouncing every word correctly. So if you have an accent based on your cultural background, your task, your personal responsibility should, you know, encourage you to learn how to pronounce words especially names. Learn how to pronounce names very well, local names, foreign names, there's no exclusion. One thing I find very useful as a useful tool on radio is Google, Google search, any search, Bing search, whatever search engine you use, have it at the ready. That is one benefit you have as a radio presenter in this time and age. You need to always look up, look up words that you're not sure of their pronunciation or meaning. Sometimes we make the mistake of <laughs> using big words because we want to sound smart. But think about it. People who are really smart don't have to use big words or speak jargon. People who are really smart speak very clearly with the simplest of words. So a smart person understands a very, has a library of words at his or her disposal. So why would I be picking up big words when I have simpler words to use? So I attended a wedding two days ago with my principal. 
at that wedding, it had government functionaries, speakers of houses of assemblies, and this MC kept using the word very in every sentence. I'm serious, like every sentence. You know, in fact, there are some sentences I use very like three times, very, 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 because I was trying to emphasize or drive on this point, you know. So learning words will help you avoid such things. First of all, it's never too late to learn something. Even as I say, well, don't use very too often and all that, replace the words. If you're going to say very good, you can say it's beautiful, it's amazing, it's fantastic. There are better words to replace it. So look up those words, learn them. Um, if, you, if you're talking about a news um, event, so you're trying to relay news information or current affairs, and you don't know what you're talking about, don't say anything. Seek, ask for time, which is why it's important for you to prepare before you go on air. When, I, I don't know if you know a bit of my background in, in terms of the radio station I, I worked with, but I went from Radio Nigeria to, um, that's Treasure 98.5 in Port Harcourt, to Rhythm 93.7 FM Port Harcourt, to Cool FM, hosted the morning show, left Cool FM for Inspiration FM Lagos, and then worked at Smooth. Smooth FM was my last radio station before I left radio last year, December. At Smooth, it was a policy, company policy, that every radio presenter or radio host should come in an hour before their show starts. So if you're, you're supposed to go on air by 6, which was my time, 6 to 10, I was expected to come in at 5 a.m. Why? So you can prepare, have an hour to prepare your scripts, go through, it's, it's a new script, maybe your, your time schedule involves you reading the news as the first segment of your show, um, helps you go through your material, whatever material you have, you want to give birthday shout outs, you want to um, talk about current happenings on the, for that day, um, you want to pick entertainment news, you want to just have general gists, that's the time that you gather that information, at least the highlights of the information. So you talk from a place of knowledge. It's always important. Because when you don't know, anything, you don't know anything you're saying, and you're just talking out of your, <clears throat> permit me to use this word, A-double-S, ass. If you're going to talk about out of your ass, people will know. And the unfortunate thing, <laughs> For us as radio presenters, is everybody will hear you. Ah, it sounds nice. Oh my God, it's on radio. Oh, I enjoy the show. Blah, 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 blah. Very few genuine people will tell you, ah, okay, you're not making sense, Joe. You don't know what you're saying. Do you understand? So it behooves you as a radio presenter to be an authority of everything you say. Do you get? So you need to always find, like, take, take it as a prior, priority to know what you're saying at every point. It doesn't matter how much or how less information you have, as far as you know what you're saying and you have a source to quote, it's valid. Because most of the time, when you don't, we're not sure what you're saying, it comes across. People who are listening can tell that you don't know what you're saying because you just be rambling on. Trains be going on and on and on. I've been speaking for like 10 minutes, right? If I did not know what I was saying, I'll probably just be rambling. But because I've lived it, I've experienced it. In fact, there was a, there's an experience I, I was, you know, I, I try to remind myself. I said, when I have this conversation with you guys, I would, I would um, share it with you. What happens? And I need to ask this question to everybody. Please feel free to answer. Uh, in fact, I'll pick one person, right, randomly, and ask you to answer this question. Olisa, Olisa Abiyazim. Don't let your heart cut if I call your name. Eh? Just boldly um, open your mic and answer. What if somebody, Ulisa, either, please turn on your mic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Imagine you're on air and a caller calls in and you're talking about how people should liberate themselves from mental slavery, for lack of a, a better description or term. And then somebody calls and you say, hello, you're very excited because you're, you've been enjoying your, your voice, sound of your voice and what you're saying. Hello. And the person says, hello, my name is Andrew. And I say, what are you talking about, my man? Ulisa, what will you say? Hello, Ulisa, are you there? 
I will try and be calm, not to any radio rules. So I'll just try to be calm and communicate to him. Just com what? try to be calm. And, just try to be calm and communicate to him and be like, um, what's your first of all? What, um, uh, first of all, um, Andrew. I'll just try to handle the situation in a very, in a very nice way that it doesn't escalate. Okay, so if it was a and uh, one of one to ten, like a scale of one to ten, I'll give you one because you've already given me one thing, one element out of the question I asked you. You mentioned the person's name, which is important. You have to give feedback, right? But most like in your conversation, what you've explained to me, that's all I picked out. I should be able to hear you tell me what you say to Andrew in such a clear manner that I understand you perfectly, right? So instead of just going about, you know, ex trying to explain in an abstract sense, say, for instance, oh, what are you talking about? You are talking about emancipation from mental slavery. In fact, like you said, radio rules requires you to open up the mic or answer the call and say, welcome, Andrew, to XYZ FM. Um, thank you for calling. Please, where are you calling from? What is your name and where are you calling from in case you don't know the name? So basic things, seek out the information. So this is what we're talking about. We're dealing with information. And we're dealing, it's, a, it's a feedback system, it's like a, a call feedback system. The guy calls you, you pick out the first information, his name, where he's calling from, you drop the station ID and you give him the information back. Now, let me ask someone else. Coyote. Hi, Coyote. Coyote Fagwegi. Please turn on your mic. In this class, we know who's paying attention. Hi, Coyote. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you, sir. How do you pronounce your surname? Fagwegi. Good. Thank you. Fagwegi. So, what I just asked you, do not hesitate to ask a guest what they, how they pronounce their last name. It actually draws them in. It makes them feel like you're interested in not getting their name wrong. And that is an empathetic expression. So if you show somebody empathy through this kind of attitude, for instance, by asking them, sir, madam, please, if you don't mind, can you tell me how to pronounce your last name? They'll be like, ah, this guy, he knows what he's doing. He's smart. He, he doesn't want to make a mistake. That's you pulling them in already, right? And then if you yes, ask sir. that question hmm, and they explain it to you, you have broken the ice in preparing them to have a clear, no holds barred conversation with you. Thank you, Kyle. And let You're me welcome. ask you, Itari, Itari Thangod. Hi, Itari. Please turn on your mic. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning. So Itari, what if you were on air and somebody, you're talking about something entirely different. Somebody just, you, somebody calls you, you answer the call and you hear, fuck you, and hangs up. What will you do? Okay. The, the first thing I will, I will say, I will say, wow, I'm surprised we don't use such words here on radio. Please call her whenever you call try not to use such words as we do not condo such things in the radio. So I would say it very politely. Mm. Did, you, did you sound polite the way you just said it? Do you think you sounded polite? Um, not really because I'm you know, answering the question and the context per se, I'm speaking to you directly, not responding to the caller as I may assume. Okay, okay. So education is actually important. So what she said about telling them well, what's accepted, what's not accepted, it's good. Tamara, then it's Ari, thank you. Tamara, please turn on your mic. Hi, I'm good morning, sir. Good morning, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, how are you? Very well. So the question I asked it, Ari, how do you handle it? Um, okay, I would first of all apologize to my audience. Really, I was all right, one second, one second, Tamara, please. Blessing, could you mute your mic? 
church. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Michael. Yeah, just tap the mic. Perfect. Thank you. Tamara, please go ahead. Okay. Um, I would first of all apologize to my audience for that. And then I would go on to tell or inform my audience that such words aren't allowed on radio and um, when somebody wants to call in, they should try or avoid using those words on radio. How do you feel when it happens? Forget what you say. How do you genuinely feel? Shocked and um, <laughs> probably demoralized for a second or two. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'll share my experience. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you, Tari. And You're thank welcome. you for blessing for that as well, because you offered me an opportunity to express to you how I would um, react if somebody maybe mistakenly called in or forgot to turn down uh, down their radio. Um, yeah. So that happened to me. This question, this last question I asked you. Somebody called on sharing life issues. Um, that uh, is a counseling show that uh, you know was hosted by Chaz B of Blessed Memory for a long time until I was called into um, Lagos to host the take over the show on Inspiration FM. Somebody called in. I was talking about you know I mean Sharing Life is a very sensitive show and everybody listens. Well, a lot of people listened because it provided consolation, so-called solutions to people's lives problems, real life issues. Of Come in our cousin and said, Thank you. I hung up. <laughs> My immediate reaction was, Wow. I guess that's our cue to go on a commercial break. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I'll be back. Bam. I turned off the mic and played ads. That's one way to handle it. And why did that feel natural to me? Is because I learned a long time ago that the moment you show people who you are, really it makes your job easy like you've solved 80 percent of your anxiety problems on air the moment you feel nervous if it's your first time it could even be your hundredth time on radio and you go on air you mustn't always show your weakness you mustn't always tell them that you're nervous all the time but i'm saying in case you feel anxious before you go on air and that's holding you back from expressing yourself the first rule of thumb is let people in on how you feel. When people know how you feel, trust me, they will empathize with you. So when I said, oh, wow, <laughs> that was unexpected. That's our cue to go on a commercial break. But it kind of came back. I had more colors. All the phone lines were blinking. Not because I had something fantastic to say, but because people felt I could relate, Val, I could relate with how you reacted. And they'll move on because you've moved on. So you would already automatically draw them into your own corner by the time they know that this is exactly this guy is real or this lady is real. You know, so if people, if you're scared, let people know you're scared. If you're happy, let people know you're happy. But on radio, usually they'll tell you to express charisma, to have to be a charismatic person on radio feeling is very important because that's when people understand that you're human and you're not just some fake or fake guy or lady that's just forming what he's not on air they want to know that they're talking to a real human being that runs on flesh and blood and that feels you know real feelings so when you talk about your personal experiences you give instances radio is almost like storytelling when you start the show you let people know what the whole show is going to be about, if you can, which is why preparation is key. You carry them along with the full breadth and structure of the entire show, which is why that uh, one hour is important. If you can, or if you cannot, 30 minutes. Another thing I learned in my early days on radio, Sami Wajin, I may remember this, was back then, um, Fubara Pepu told me, and someone else, I don't remember his name, he said, when you're going on radio, um, try as much as possible to not eat 30 minutes before. What does that mean? It means that if you're hungry, make sure you eat an hour before you go on air. At most, or at, yeah, at most 30 minutes before you go on air. Because if you just eat 
10 minutes before or five minutes before you go on air. By the time you go on air, people will hear it from your lips, the way you're talking. You'll be smacking your lips unconsciously. And that's unprofessional. People, I don't know about your radio stations or where you may, you may have been attached. Most radio stations abhor um, liquid or food in the studio space, not even the studio itself. Some stations are strict enough to not allow you to carry your phones inside the studio, excuse me, to avoid distractions. So again, to be charismatic, you need to be real. You need to be empathetic. You need to be relatable. You need to be yourself as much as possible. I encourage you to be yourself. Um, do not have any errors. If you make mistakes, admit your mistakes. Apologize immediately. You, nobody expects you to know it all. But the moment you make a conscious effort to practice words, pronunciation of words and names and learn about meanings, most of the time, which is why I said you guys are lucky in this day and age, if you can afford it, you have a laptop. If you can afford it, you have a great on the information you're talking about as you're speaking so that you come from a place of knowledge. If you don't have the liberty of preparation, and be able to um, sorry just a second Ada can you hear me you can hear me or mute your mic yes I can hear you sir can you hear the lecturer no sir I can't hear you anymore no, that's, that's why you're the class captain. You don't wait for me to step in at this point in time. You are not hearing the lecturer. You let the lecturer know. Maybe there are issues, network, bandwidth, and the lecturer doesn't know, okay? So next time, you don't wait for me to intervene. You let the lecturer know, either by text or by direct calls, that you can hear him that we'll lost network from his end for a while. Do you understand me? Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, guys, let me reach out to the lecturer. I'm here. Sorry, um, thanks, Sammy. And that was the last thing you heard me say. I thought the lecturer is asking the last thing you heard him say. Yes. So the last thing I heard you say was when you were talking about eating um, an hour before you go on air. And making a conscious yeah. decision to update your vocabulary. Yes, um, thanks for that. So, I mean, if you must, I'm not saying you must eat an hour before you go on anyway, but you get my point. Um, if you must eat, if you're hungry, make sure that it doesn't creep into like 30 minutes or an hour before you go on air because um, the food takes about that long, especially to start digesting from your mouth. Uh, speaking in biological terms, carbohydrates starts digestion from the mouth. So because of that, your body secretes uh, from mucous me membrane, it secretes enzymes that break down the food from your mouth. So unconsciously, you'll be smacking your lips without knowing it, and it will sound in the way you speak on air if you eat within that period, 30 minutes before you go on air. So that's the trick behind it. So most of the time when I speak, because I was just saying this, I just you know, remember a few instances where people say, yeah, well, how do you know a lot? It's because I read a lot. And as a radio presenter, it's important that you come from a place of knowledge. So if you can afford it, have a laptop around you or have a smartphone around you. If you don't have the liberty of time, preparation time, it's good to have those tools around so you can do a quick search on any topic or term or word that you do not remember the right pronunciation, not sure. If you're not sure, do a quick search. If, you're not, if you don't know, do a quick search. Don't assume things on air. All right, it's okay to say, I do not know for sure, but let me confirm. But by all means, if you're having an interview, like the other day, I was listening to a radio station in Delta City. Last week, I was in, uh, was it last week? Yeah, last weekend, I was in Asaba, and I heard a radio presenter 
interviewing a political office holder and the political office holder I thought he was gracious because if it was me on the other side I'll probably take the radio presenter to school because the radio presenter was giving instances about some political history in Nigeria he was not he did not know the jack all of what he was saying he kept saying uh, um, um, I'm not sure I don't know um, but Oga shut up if you don't know don't say she gets so, <laughs> and that's the worst thing you can do to yourself because you lose credibility and it's important that you hold that because that's what builds trust in the mind of your listener. I stress that word, um, purpose, because when you're on air, imagine you're speaking to one person. You're talking to one person. It's a one-on-one -on -one conversation, right? Regardless of how many million people are listening to you, you're talking to one person at a time. So when you say, or oh, you're going off air or you're coming back, you're talking to one person. So always have that in mind. If you're addressing them, thank you, my listener, for tuning into this radio show. I'll be back with you. Not that I will see you because it's not TV. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Until then, all the pleasantries and then keep it moving, but keep it short and simple. And that's how sweet radio is. So I'll pause here and um, ask for questions. So please feel free to jump in. All right, guys, if you have any questions, just raise your hand so I can call you up. Okay, so I have a question for you. When right. you were, when you started talking, you mentioned that you left radio last last year December. I wanted to know why you left radio. Well, I left radio because um, I wanted to build my own company. I've been building it, uh, but I needed to scale and. So we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? So we can hear you. Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Please continue. Um, I said I left radio because I wanted to So we can't hear you. I don't know what's wrong. It seems like the network is yeah. really bad. Can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? Yes, I can yes, hear sir. you, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So did you hear my answer? Or should I say it again? Please repeat, sir. I didn't hear your answer. Let's talk with you. Okay. I said I left radio because I wanted to dedicate time, focus on building my company. I own a radio station. It's called, it's an online radio station called tristradio.com, T R Y S T radio.com. And I own a media company called Streamline Media that I needed time to build. I need time to build. I had to focus on that and also give way for the younger generation to grow as well and excel. So these are the reasons why. Wow, that's nice. Yeah. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. OK, it's a thing, God. Please ask your question. OK, please meet you. Hello, sir. Hi, sorry. Yes, so please. Uh, what's your take on this? Maybe um, you're presenting a radio show and a call according, and there's uh, Itari, a hold on, Itari, hold on. Hello, hello, Itari, hold on. This is Sammy. Itari, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Do you remember what I said about scripting of questions? Yes, sir. I do. Did sir. you do? Did you did you do that? I did it, but I hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, 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 listen, listen. It's a yes or no thing. Did you do it? 
I did it, sir. You did it? Yes, sir. Did you script your question? My question is script, sir. Go ahead. Hello, sir. Yes, I just want yes, to go ahead, it. sir. Okay. Uh, uh, what would be your reaction if there is a hold back? A presenter called you and there's a hold back. What would be your immediate reaction? Now, why I ask this is because some presenters here, when I listen to them, immediately there's a there's a hold back, they just cut it that this person is not serious. So, what is your take in that? Thank you. So if there's a, a hold back or feedback from the other end that's annoying. Um, and I'm, I, that's the end, the listener's end, not the presenter's end. Um, you politely say, please turn down the volume of your radio. But if, you, if your console has this mute button, there are some consoles that are equipped with that, uh, that uh, aspect or the gadget where you can mute the, the caller. So if the feedback doesn't go on radio, you can mute them. And if they can still hear you, tell them, please turn down the radio, the volume of your radio. Most of the time they can't hear you say it, but they are listening to the radio, obviously, because that's why the whole back happens. So you mute them, mute the call and say politely, could you please turn off your radio on that end or turn off the other device and listen to me on this end. Let's speak on the phone and not on the radio, you know, as polite as possible. And you never tire from saying that because the, the more polite you are, every instance it happens, the more people learn quickly to do the right thing. You know, some people can be annoying that if you're rude, they will do it to piss you off. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, politeness is key. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Just a follow-up. Just a follow-up. Uh, Go ahead. Is it... Is it ethical because of that is the whole back to drop a caller's call in order no. to take another because of to minimize time? Is it ethical? Well, it's a yes and no answer. Yes, because if the person repetitively or repetitively makes that mistake, yes, you can apologize and end the call while you meet it. What I mean is this. If you said it the first time and you're mute and the person is there, you can see here, you, pause, you mute it again and say, please turn off the sound or the radio on that end or turn it down completely. You turn, you mute, or mute it again, you hear, I would respectfully end this call. You can say it in your words, I'm sorry, but I, I will have to end this call so we can continue with the conversation on the other end with the next caller. I'm sorry, I apologize. Let's keep it moving. But as much as possible, just give that person the benefit of doubt because most people don't understand how to mute that call. They don't understand the feedback or any annoying feedback you're getting on your end. So just always give people the benefit of doubt. Give them a second chance. If they misuse that second chance, politely end the call and take the other one, but never without apologizing. Okay, sir. Because uh, I tell people, uh, yeah, you're welcome. I tell people that it's actually always important to consider yourself as a call service center agent when you're on radio. If you are a call center agent, you're not up somebody, off your phone, turn off your radio. Uh -uh, I don't have time for this. You can't speak as a normal human being. You have to be nice. You have to be empathetic, you have to be polite. They are your customers and they are giving you their time and they are spending their airtime calling you. So you just have to be nice, you have to be polite. Okay, sir, thank you so much, sir. Uh, <laughs> um, as you said that what your explanation uh, does not match what I hear on the radio most times. Yeah. Most uh, the the reverse is the case most times. What I hear over the radio. But thank you so much, sir. My pleasure. Mr. Elvis, please ask a question. Uh, good morning, Mr. Hi, Elvis. Good morning. Fine. Okay. How do you deal with um, nerves? 
I breathe, I take in deep breath. And I say a prayer. And I come on there and if the nerves haven't gone, I'm like, man, I'm nervous. So guys, but thanks for joining me. Thanks for giving me your time. <laughs> I make myself laugh a lot. And that's it, I go. By the time you're, you've made your first sentence, you've explained yourself or you're shaking it off with the people, with, because you're involving everybody with the way you feel, you feel at the time of your feeling. It will most likely just disappear. That's how I deal with nerves, but not without what we, in the, the like, in the, uh, what I call it now, how do I put it? In that order, I take deep breaths, say a prayer, and if it hasn't gone by then, <laughs> ask people to understand, you know, draw people in to how I feel. So let me even give you the trick or rather the, yes, the trick I used for many years, because when I, through the time I was hosting morning radio, most people knew me for my morning shouts. That was my trick to release nerves. You know, I go on air in the morning, first thing you hear when I open up the mic is good welcome to the good morning nigeria show blah 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 all that shout is to release that <laughs> and it always works so you can have yours like have your own way of doing it you mustn't say hey, good morning you can just come on air and say welcome welcome to the show energy is always great and you're going with energy whether you're sad you cried five minutes before, nobody cares. Everybody wants to hear an energetic voice. Everybody wants to feel good energy when you come on air. Feeling is always important on radio. So yeah, bring it each time. Oh, thank you very much. Sir. My pleasure. Mr. Samuel, please ask a question. Yeah, good morning, Sam. Good morning, Samuel. Right. My question is, um, a, a listener called to ask you a relative, relative question on the show I present in, unexpected relative question what you are presenting, and you don't have the answer, immediate answer right there with you. What would you do? What did you say? Native question? I'm not I mean, sure I right. a listener, I mean, a listener called you to ask you a relative question based on what you are presenting, and you don't have the answer immediately. Right there. What's a related question, please? I mean, I mean, a, um, a call you are presenting a show. A, cost, a listener call to ask you a question based on what you are presenting, okay, and you okay. don't have such answer right there with you. What will you do, man? You have Google is your friend, though. As they're asking you the question, there you tell them to please like elaborate. Let them elaborate the question. That's to buy your, buy you time. And if you don't, if Hey, God forbid the internet does not work that day. My brother, tell them before the end of the show, you come back to them with the answer. Right? Seek okay, okay, because most, that's most of the time, who, though. Yeah. Yeah, seek, seek their indulgence. Have the time, they will, they will understand with you. They will bear with you. Okay, thank you. But make sure you fulfill your promise. Make sure you fulfill your promise. So always come from a place of you know always remember that you're dealing with people who have who have earned your trust or you've earned their trust so do not abuse their trust okay so if you tell them um for instance your show starts by six and you tell them by 8 a.m you're going to give them the top bird days of the day by all means please give them the top bird days by eight if you promise to give them by eight so if you promise the listener that you're going to come back to them with the answer, by all means, come back with the answer. Because if you don't, that listener may not tune in tomorrow. Or if he does, and you're lucky, and you promise another thing, they'll just do you know, <laughs> please, I think. That's how you said it. Yeah. People, listeners never forget. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, thank you. Why ask this question? Because I was actually listening to a radio, one of the radio stations in about so... I wrote an I asked the question. I asked um, the presenter. The presenter actually told me she will get back to me till the um, show finished. I didn't get to hear any answer. So that's mm -hmm. why I asked this question. Yeah. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Sometimes some you're welcome. Sometimes, Samuel, thank you. Sometimes you get carried away and you don't for, you don't remember because radio can happen very fast and time just run out run out of you run out of time and 
you don't remember until the next day, whenever you remember, if by any chance you make the mistake of forgetting before the end of the show, the first thing you do when you come back on air, it doesn't matter whether you know whether the listener is listening or not, fulfill your promise at the earliest chance possible. So maybe you come back on air the next day, give that answer and apologize to the particular listener. So what I do usually is, and it could help you, is anytime I'm taking calls or I'm receiving text messages, I put down names. I have a sheet of paper and a pen. I write down names. It helps you recall who asked a particular question. And just, you know, shorthand, quick notes, put it on the side, always helps. And when you, when you embody that habit over time, it helps your memory as well. Over time, you're able to recall things very quickly. So a week after, some listener that called you a week before and didn't call you the rest of the week could call and you remember an instance that they mentioned that you, you jotted down. So there's this magic about writing. If you jot something down, no matter how small, expressing that thought on paper commits it to memory faster. So somebody, I mean, I had random issues, or random um, experiences of people telling me they were ill. And a month later, they called me out of the blue. And I now said, excuse me, somebody's knocking. And I said, hi, ah, how are you, Engineer Abdul? How are you feeling? Are you better? That's a very powerful thing to do. And the listener never forgets that experience because you've empathized with them and you make them feel like you're, you're connected. I'm having a session, yeah? Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you, Samuel. I hope that answers your question. Yes, yes, we do. Thanks. Yeah. Mr. Michael, there is a please ask a question. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Michael. Okay. Sir, I want to ask this question. Um, what if while running your show and then it gets to the time where the listener wants to call in and has to call in and nobody is calling in, what do you do in that instance? Say that again. While your show is going on, while you are running your show, and then it gets to the point where the listeners has to have to call in and give you their own take on issues or answer questions, and then nobody's calling in. What do you do in that instance? Sir? You give more information. Provide supporting information. And if you, if you run out of information, music will always be there to play. Okay, and by sir, this time, I, I assume you already understand the structure of a radio show, you know, in terms of how music intersperses with conversation, talk. And it, it depends mm -hmm. on the structure of the radio station, whether if it's a talk station, if it's a music station, they always have a music speech um, percentage or ratings or whatever scale, you know. Uh, for instance, Smooth FM, it's talk, talk music. It's a mix. So usually it's best to, in that sense, um, always break music with talk after three songs and not more than that and you play ads um you if you go if you segue into an ad break you come back with music and then after that song you could decide to you know break it after the, like the second chorus or after the entire song and then come back you know so it just depends on the structure of the um, of the radio station um, but yeah, if you run out of content and it's not, you don't have the liberty of getting calls or feedback, give more and not necessarily to rehash. You could rehash. It's important because people don't grab that quickly and always assume that the listener that just tuned in a second before wasn't listening the whole time. So may not get the entire content that you relayed before they joined. Um, always reel that person in by rehashing what you said if you use other words in another you know other phrases to describe what you explained 10 minutes ago but don't repeat yourself too much so it doesn't sound boring but yeah hope that answers your question thank you sir You're welcome michael mr Osa, please ask your question good morning sir good morning yeah, so, so I want to ask, if you're running commentary and out of passion, you use the F word, 
Do you apologize <laughs> afterwards or you just flow with it? Immediately. Immediately apologize. You have no business using the F word on the radio. <laughs> just imagine you're talking and running the camera and you say, fuck. And you, and you apologize or your, your instinct to now say, oh shit. <laughs> just apologize, man. You need to apologize. Very bizarre. <laughs> it's bizarre, but it happens. Yeah, apologize. It has happened to me. Trust. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. All right, sir. There are no more hands up, so you can continue and carry on with the lecture. I'm done. Now. Your question and answer was the last section. When you said no more hands up, guess what song I remembered? Kweku the Traveler. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much, guys. I really enjoyed this session. I love talking to you. I loved your questions. They're quite insightful. And special thanks to my friend, my brother, Sami Wejina. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It's always, um, although I run away from this kind of horror, but I enjoy having conversations with upcoming radio presenters on air personality. It's always important to just remember that you keep learning every day. We, we never tire of learning. The, the day you stop learning is the day you die. So when you feel like you've arrived, that's the beginning of failure. You never arrive on radio, right? Um, yeah, you might be a celebrity and be celebrated by people far and wide, but the moment you feel like you're a celebrity in your own right, I brother, it could be a local champion, you know, <laughs> in that small space. But aspiring for greatness means you continue learning and you never lack the appetite to learn and learn new things and improve your knowledge because there's so much to learn, there's so much to read about, there's so much to experience. Seek knowledge everywhere in every place with anybody. A 10-year-old could teach you something you've never known about human empathy, about feelings, about, you know, there's knowledge in every single experience because you're dealing with people from different walks of life, different experiences, different backgrounds. So yeah, it's always key to have that open mind as a radio presenter. And never, you're never above mistakes. And when you're yourself, uh, you come over from a place of um, humility. I would say that without mincing words, you will never go wrong. So I wish you all the best. And I hope to see you in front. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate Like I enjoyed this lecture so much. And <laughs> we have two hands um, raised up, so I'm just going to call no so hands. they can ask your <laughs> question. <laughs> yes, right. so Mr. Itari, thank God. Please ask your question. Okay, sir. Forgive me, sir. I never knew that mm. the class was coming to an end so soon. Mm. Mm. So I thought after this session of question and answer, we are still moving forward. So okay, well, I don't want to just, um, <laughs> <laughs> just just uh, permit me. Let me ask this. I missed that something. Uh, uh, you were saying something and the line broke out, so yeah. I didn't get. Please, can you once again? Give me um, the basic skills of a radio presenter. You mentioned listening and uh, communicating from the place of understanding, but the other ones I didn't get them. Yes, I mean, it's, uh, it's simple for you to, as a radio presenter, you need to hone your skills in communication. To be a very, an excellent communicator, you need to be able to listen. You need to, we never, so sometimes we feel like we're good listeners, but you find yourself sometimes interrupting someone to complete their sentence for them. To be a good listener, apply emotional intelligence by listening intently and not say a word until the person finishes expressing themselves, whether they lack the right words to use or not. Listen very well because that helps you to so listening is not necessarily about just understanding where they're coming from, but also making them feel like their point is valid. That's what makes you an excellent communicator. Allow the person to express themselves completely, except you're running out of time, which is sometimes why as a radio uh, presenter, you limit the calls to maybe 60 seconds or two minutes, depends on how your structure runs, but I would advise to limit it to under two minutes for each caller. So you give the other callers a chance to express themselves. If it's a talk show, if it's just uh, a, an interaction, our interactive conversation where it's fast-paced, it's 30 minutes, light-hearted conversation, keep it under one minute. 
the shorter the sweeter. But listening is one key skill to have. Um, using the right words and not necessarily big words, big jargon. When you use big words, I'll just assume you don't know what you're saying or you're not that smart because you probably cram those words to make us yourself sound grandiose. But, and I use the big word there, you know, intentionally. But seek out simple words, so read. Any material you see, read, read. Seek knowledge everywhere, read. If the more you read, the more you know, yeah? Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Mr. Oh, yeah, yes, please ask okay. your question. Sorry, just maybe one question. Yeah, last one. Okay. Oh, two people. <laughs> no, no, last question, please. You can you can crunch it into one. Okay. okay. Well, I'll, I'll just take those two quickly. Okay, let's let's do it. All right, sir. Okay, so, sir, so if someone criticizes you on air without using curse mm -hmm. words, what do you do? He says your show What's is whack, your show is not, I don't like your show, you are awful. What do you do? I'll ask them to help me explain better. Like, what do you mean by my show is whack? Please explain. Could you make it clear to me? Let me understand how whack my show is. What do you mean? Like, what aspect of my show is whack? I'll engage. I'm, that, I'm not that guy that you come and tell me my show is whack. I want you to tell me why you think my show is whack. Half, <laughs> half the time, through the explanation, they will probably expose themselves as either a hater or one of two things will happen. Either they expose themselves as a, you know, as a hater or they would educate you with valid information or valuable information that would make you help you improve your show. And that engagement, trust me, your listener, your other listener will appreciate it because it will make them feel like no matter how much criticism this guy gets, he gives everybody a listening ear. And he's willing to learn. So don't come from the place of pride. Don't say, do you know who I am? Do you know how long I've been doing this thing? Who are you to tell me my show is work? Mm -mm. Oh, thank you for your feedback. Really? You think my show is work? I'm sorry to hear that. Please, could you tell me why you think my show is work? Call them by their name. James, Mabel. Why do you think my show is work? It's important for me to learn and, and listen. Let them tell you. If you're lucky, they'll tell you why. And guess what will happen? Right. If that person tells you why, that person will always listen to your show. That person will come back to listen to your subsequent shows more than a passive listener. You would have won a fan. Next and final question, please. Thank you, sir. Pleasure. All right, Mr. Mike Cookie, you're the last person. Please ask your question. All right, thank you. And good morning, sir. Um, Hi, Mike. It was a wonderful lecture here, and I, I, learned, I learned a lot. Thank you for that. Okay, just a uh, question. I just want to know, um, what was the outstanding difference between a presenter and an OAP? The outstanding difference between a presenter and an OAP, using your terms, is an OAP is an on-air personality. It means that you're bringing your personality to bear on air. It means that you can go on air and say, hello, guys, what's up, what's up, what's up? Because that's the kind of person you are. But don't come on air and say, hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? And in real life, you're like, hello, how are you? People know you're faking. So an on-air personality will most likely bring their real personality on air, which is what I do, which is who I am as well. A presenter, I'm also a presenter in the sense that I present a certain set of information or structure or show that has been scripted. All shows, by the way, are scripted according to my standards. And I was very happy, Mr. Sami, asked if the, your questions were scripted because it's important for you to script every time. Even if sometimes it restricts you, it should restrict you because you should work with structure and timing and be precise. A presenter presents a certain set of information in a structured manner. Doesn't mean that an OAP, an on-air personality does, is not structured or is more loose, but 
The dif significant difference is the presenter does not necessarily project his personality ahead of the information, but the, the honor personality brings the personality into everything. If that makes sense. Does it make sense to you? <laughs> yes, it does. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, sir. Can I go now? Okay, <laughs> yes, the, the, before, ah, that's sorry, let me come in. Before, before okay. you go, uh, before you go, sir, let, let, me very, let me very quickly say this. How many of you listen to our lecturer? I don't want to be called a lecturer, but I will call him the lecturer for the purpose of what we're doing now. How many of you ever listened to him on Silverbed Reading 93.7 before he left Port Harcourt? How many of you ever listened to him? He did just say something. Okay, I'm not calling, I'm not calling or referring to anybody as Indomie generation. I didn't say anything. But I, I listened to Mr. Valentine Ohu when he was with Silverbed within 93.7. And I was a huge fan of the man. Ada, let me ask you, Ada, just unmute your mic very quickly. So we let our lecturer leave. He has other things to attend to. Ada, can you remember yes. any lecture? Yes, can you remember any lecture that I attended from beginning to end? Can you remember any of such lectures? Yes, sir. Which one is that? Um, Mr. Calvin, sir. You attended okay. the lecture. Which other one have I attended from beginning to end? Can you remember? Okay, the answer I'm is none. Sure, okay, even Mr. Calvin's lecture, I wasn't there from beginning to the end. This is the only lecture I've attended from beginning to the end because I said today I'm going to be a student. This is somebody that I it's strange for me to say this, but it's true. He's somebody that I've met, somebody I look up to, and I must say I, I was uh, educated, uh, Mr. Valentine. I know you'll be surprised. I'm very it. humbled by that. I'm humbled Ad, by that, thank you. Ada, have you heard me say this to any lecturer since we started? No, sir. Okay, so Mr. Val, uh, this, 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 was a huge, this was a huge lecture. I was a student today. I appreciate you. We'll continue the rest of the conversation outside here, but before we let you go, I'll try to do this in less than 60 seconds. I have a question for all of you. Not the lecturer, obviously. I have a question for all of you. If you, if you, know, the, if you know the answer, just unmute your mic and go ahead. Question number one, just two questions. Question number one, what's the major difference between an online radio station and a terrestrial radio station? Who knows the answer? If you know the answer, go ahead and answer. 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I take it that nobody knows. Question number two, Lecturer says, don't take in fluids like liquids into a live studio. Question, you have five seconds to answer. If you know the answer, just go ahead, unmute your mic and answer. Why are OAP's presenters, why are individuals not allowed to take fluids into a live studio? Who knows the answer? Five seconds, four, three. Okay, nobody knows. I well, it's not but... allowed to take what, sir? It was, it was great. Fluid. Fluids, fluids, liquids, fluids, liquids, like water, like drinks. Why don't why is it not allowed to take those things into a life to Who knows? Yes, sir. I can't I, sir. It's... go ahead. Sir, it's not okay. allowed because the presenter can burp or bath on while on air. Say that again. It is not allowed because the presenter can burp or like bop while on air. <laughs> like Just I said, I want to Okay, no, problem. No, problem, no problem, you can meet your mic. We're going to let our lecturer leave. The reason, why, the reason why I raised these two points is because the lecturer talked about owning an online radio station. I was shocked that nobody asked him um, what the major differences are between an online radio station and the terrestrial radio station, and nobody knows the answer. Because I asked him, nobody gave me an answer, but nobody asked him that question. And he talked about not taking things into the studio. Only he didn't give me the right answer. Okay. That's not the right answer. But nobody asked the lecturer. In summary, we're all here to learn. And that's why I talk about speaking. That's why I say when the lecture is talking, you take down notes so you can ask questions about things that you do not know. If you don't speak, you will forget. I'm not going to keep the lecture anymore. Mr. Valentine, oh, this was absolutely fantastic. I was a student. I learned so much. We'll have another conversation. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give the details of those, that conversation in front of anybody. We'll talk when we know more. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Speak to okay. you soon. Huh? Thank right, you. Yes. God bless. Okay.